Good morning, I'm Frank Kaufman. Uh, I've put together a short piece today entitled, My Best. Um, I'm inspired to speak on it based on this constant uh, thing of mine. I read this uh, uh, young friend who ended up uh, teaching a community of people for many years. And uh, I read his stuff and uh, as you know, I always get inspired by some particular, what I think is a rare or unique insight, and today was no different. Uh, and so um, he's, as I've also said in prior podcasts, he, he speaks to a community of people who are grand in their understanding of their mission in the world or work in the world. They, they think in, in massive terms, and a lot of his effort is to kind of translate that down into not to dampen this kind of grand design of this community to that everything's important and change the world and help others and help countries and world peace and he's kind of, he doesn't want to dampen that that drive or world orientation and yet wants to make their lives or our lives more practical and more realistic while retaining that fresh drive that is beautiful uh, in, its, in its own right. So once again here, he's speaking to a group of people with that type of orientation and mentality. And um, so I was reading him this morning and, and once again kind of said, well, you know, that's clever, that's helpful, he's insightful. I always get a lot as my listeners know, get a lot out of uh, these, these little kind of, little kind of, it's kind of, whoa, you know, nice one, or, you know, caught that, like, interesting angle like that. So let me read uh, what I read that's inspired me to create this little piece called My Best. So he's speaking to this group of people, and he says, you have the answer. What, what is your best? So it's the, to go back, is you have the answer. What is your best? What can you do best? That's the first answer you need. You have to question yourself and give the answer. You have to do that. What can I do best? For the time being, put aside the idea that I want to be the best, be the greatest. Just what can I do best? Know your limits because everything has its time and place. I continue reading him. Time ticks forward, so you have to think of the present before you think about the future. And when you think about the present and knowing your limits, it means understanding how, you, how you've lived and how you think about your own history, and that requires you also to look at your past. Finally, Finding your best, if you have to make that conclusion, or if you have to come to that, provide that answer, you can only find it today. Tomorrow might be different. Hopefully, that's how you're going to get better. You have to ask yourself, what can I do today? What is my best? And if you have that insight, then you can think about what is my greatest. So I think... I think of this little set of thoughts, he speaks to something fairly common in the human experience, and that's that all of us or many of us have deep within ourselves some grand dream of, of some great, great thing we want to do or be or have uh, that, that kind of sits secretly or quietly inside. Uh, and it's probably full of it's probably a big distance away, like a lot of people want to be rich, but they're far from it. Uh, they may be getting along or might even be poor by uh, standards around them. And yet they dream of mansions and swimming pools and yachts and boats and planes or just the kind of freedoms that come with, uh, with uh, wealth, uh, the ability to host others or to go wherever you want or have exciting adventures and fly here or there. Um, those are materialist uh, dreams. They're delightful. Most, a lot of people basically 
operate at that level. There's others who have political aspirations, others who have maybe athletic aspirations. They're good at something now if they're young, if you're young, uh, how good can I be? How, uh, you know, can I make it to the majors? Can I get on a team? Can I get, um, was it drafted? Um, could I make it to the pros? These are kind of big dreams and they're all, they're usually some distance off in a future horizon. And we want, we want to be that we want to shoot for that. Some people are very kind of saintly in their aspirations. They want to have some, some massive or enduring environmental effect, save an endangered species or save like kind of a massive environmental problem, like the plastics in the Pacific and things like that. And, uh, and I think it's these young dreams that eventually do manifest in the lives of people because heaven supports and feeds us in these dreams and they have to be there. But a lot of us are just, we're kind of dreamy, you know, we have big dreams, but we're never taking the concrete actual steps and never, never really establishing a genuine orientation uh, and self-understanding that is a necessary part of what it will take to then add on the, the skills and the study and the training and the practice and the, and the, uh, the long nights or the, uh, the wind sprints or whatever. Uh, those are, the, those are the, the kind of the rough training parts. But also there's a certain necessity to have a basic foundational orientation or a starting point or a starting self that, that then moves um, intelligently and, and practically and uh, reasonably uh, and effectively toward these big dreams of ours. So here's my buddy, my, uh, this teacher of mine, uh, explaining, uh, ex talking to a group of people that are just full of a, of a profound communal and collective dream of making the world better and, and starts to speak about this issue of how do we get there and the thing he introduces here that I thought is particularly helpful or particularly interest is he creates a sort of a geography of temporality. He creates a kind of a landscape of time. So you have your past, your present, and your future. And he tries to weave in or does successfully, in my view, weaves in or incorporates the, the function and, and the impact of the reality of these three temporal realities, past, present, and future, and imposes them on this necessary element of me coming into a clear grasp of what it is I'm good at and where and where I'm at in how good I am at it. Uh, so he kind of puts us on a map. And as soon as we're on a map, uh, then we can find out our locale and then our, the pursuit of our destination becomes far more clear. We do that for road trips. We do that anywhere we're headed. But if we're headed to greatness or headed to our dreams, that also should be somehow mapped. Uh, but his is not a spatial map. It's a temporal map. And that's what I thought was pretty cool or pretty, pretty genius because our progress towards our own self-improvement and our own quote unquote greatness actually exists on a temporal map. And so mapping it in that way. So when he talks about uh, what can I do best, that in itself, that just that question alone is an extremely important question. What can I do best? We need to, we need to be in relation to that in a deadly serious manner if we have any genuine hope of making a difference, even for one person, or no matter how big or how small, if we want to make a difference, it's very important to, to engage that very question, what can I do best? But in addition to that, he, he presents for us or, or introduces the reality of the past, the present, and the future on this trajectory for my self-improvement and for me becoming 
my greatest, my greatest. Will I, will I actually found, will I actually establish a tech company or a media company? What are my chances? Will I be that great? Will I impact the world in that way? Will I establish an international distribu- food distribution uh, uh, program that manages to reach areas of great need and genuine hunger? Am I that great? Am I that good? Uh, and where do I stand on the trajectory from past, present, and future? Personally, personally, because I'm the one who has to get there. And that's the beauty of what I just read the, uh, just now. So, so he says that the only way the only way you can ask this question legitimately, what what am I best at? He points out this must be done in the present. In the present, what am I best at? Because tomorrow that might change. By tomorrow, I may have read a book. I have met. May, I, I may have met a trainer. I may have done all the exercises and, and challenges and things that will make that que- the answer to that question tomorrow far different. What am I best? What what can I do best? By tomorrow, it might be far superior to what that is today. So when when I ask that question in the present, it's always in the present. What can I do best? And that inquiry brings us into a self-examination right here and now. It's humbling, but it's realistic. The here and now is realistic. And in order to in order to have any sense of of seeking or or approaching, having an answer to that question, what can I do best? It requires me to look at my past. That's the only way I'll start to have access to any information that I'm going to draw from in order to come up with that answer. What can I do best? I have to look at my past days. Well, I did this, I did this, I did this, but but this I was extremely good at. This I've been constantly good at. I'm magical with numbers. Just put a sheet of numbers in front of me and take it away in three seconds. I can tell you every number on that page and where it's set on that page. Maybe that's what I'm best at, but I have to look at the history of my striving or history of my experience to ask that question for today. And and then, then that puts me in a very realistic posture and position and recognition of the answer to that question, what am I best at? And so, my friend, uh, I had this teacher of mine says, time ticks forward. So you have to think about the present before you think about the future. That question must be asked about here and now. That requires me to look at my past, have a grasp of my past, to see the tr- to see uh, how I've performed and, and what comes easy to me. What, what, am, what can I do best? It, it requires an examination of the past, but the answer comes at looking at my condition and my situation in the immediate present. Once that's done, he says, after, and after you have that insight, after you have that insight, then you can think about what is my greatest. So his final word there is not robbing me of my dream. It's, a, it's actually providing me with being not a not an idle dreamer, a realistic person, and at the same time, tying uh, tying me to uh, giving genuine life to my intuition and and sense, and kind of gazing excitedly at the horizon before me. Then he says, "You can think about what is my greatest." It's a it's a really lovely it's a really lovely um, a gift that comes in a simple word or two, past, present, future. Ask that question: What am I best at? And then then I believe, acquire, uh, taking these on, is really a big step toward substantiating the, the the genuine dreams that fill our hearts. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, for listening. We'll talk again soon.